hello, hello. This is the CHGO Sky podcast now in your ear holes, presented by PointsBet. Use promo code CHGO when you sign up. Get two free risk-free bets up to $2,000. It is a blustery day here in Skytown. Uh, but anyway, if you're w- wondering who I am, I'm sure you are. I'm Janice Scurrio. With me, as always, is the inimitable Sabria Whitaker. Sabria, how the heck are you today? I am doing well. How about yourself? I'm doing okay. Uh, kind of wish I wasn't getting spit upon every time I walk outside. But you know what? Such is life. Such is life. Uh, so uh, the Sky are 25-8. and eight. So uh, they took two out of three games this week. We're going to go a little bit in-depth about that. But anyway, uh, let's catch up. So, Sabria, you were in New York last week. Can you tell me I all about was. that? And what I What were was. you doing? Of course, had to put on my manager, supporter, bestie hat and go and support the Sparks on their final road trip. Mm. Started off the season with a road trip, kind of had an interesting one ending the season. Um, Had Syracuse women's basketball team come out to support Brittany, so I had to run that whole thing. But I'm making progress on my tour of going to all 12 arenas, so that was fun. I can confirm that the Liberty has one of the dopest in arena environments. I love the entertainment. I love Ellie, even though I got hit (laughs) on the head for wearing this jersey courtside. (laughs) But it was a very good experience. And I think everybody should try and go to all 12 teams in their lifetime if they can. Absolutely. So how many have you visited so far? Um, okay, so obviously there's ours. I've been to Indiana, Atlanta, LA, and New York. So I have a bit of a ways to go. Mm, absolutely. What What's next on your list? Like, like what, what are you most excited about visiting next? So I would have said we might have an opportunity to go to Phoenix. But right before I got here, that probably changed a little bit, which mm. I'm sure we're going to get into um, so I'm not really sure. What, what is, which one do you think I should visit next? Huh? Uh, oh, wait, we're supposed to go to Minnesota? Tar- yeah, Target Center. Target when, Center. When were we supposed to do that? I think that was the 14th, I believe. Uh, it is this upcoming weekend, okay. actually. Okay, yeah, so I believe. let's go. Yeah, that, that, go. Is, that is going to be uh, at least um, uh, Sylvia Fowle's last regular season game. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the Lynx and Syl in a little bit. Uh, but, yeah, that, that's been one uh, arena I've been wanting to check out. Uh, and its proximity to everything in downtown Minneapolis is really cool. Uh, there's lots of really cool bars, cool places to eat, uh, places to hang out. Uh, if you uh, happen to like baseball, they ap- apparently have a baseball team. You can check that out if you want to. Uh, but yeah, uh, I-, I think definitely they are the, the in proximity, the closest WNBA team uh, to Chicago. Or wait, maybe it's Indiana. I don't know. Or maybe uh, very much so Indiana. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but I think they might be next. Hmm, yeah, maybe it's just a hair further away than Indiana is, perhaps. All right, so like I said before, uh, the Sky are 25-8. and eight. Uh, They can clinch home court advantage throughout the upcoming playoffs, uh, but of course, with a handful of games left, they need to finish strong. And also, too, uh, just with 25 wins, the Sky have set a franchise record for most wins in a season. Now, Sabria, you've been a fan of this team for a very long time. Yes. And so 25 wins as a franchise record, I feel as if that's monumental. So what do you feel is different about this team than teams you've seen before in the past? Um, I'm going to say I think the support is a little different. Like I know mm-hmm. I think we've had a pretty loyal fan base yeah I know people have always shown up and shown out but I just think it's a different energy now um I think maybe social media has helped them um probably in a different way this year than maybe before but I just think the players too like I think they believe it and I think that's so important when you believe it the people around you believe it the fans and everyone we got a taste last season and we're like okay let's do it again run it back and everybody's really believing it and look at us who would have thought? Look at us. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> Actually, I, I, I really firmly believe that this team would run it back for sure. 
Uh, but according to uh, Women's Basketball Worldwide, the Sky's biggest loss this year was only by seven points to the guess who, the Sparks. I saw that. I saw that. I do. Yeah. I uh, that. that was opening game uh, without their two starters uh, and the Aces. Uh, every other loss has been less than four points. So uh, really hopeful. Uh, this team has not gotten mopped at all. Like even Love especially when we thought they were going to get mopped, especially after playing uh, Dallas, uh, such a very physical, exhausting team. Yes. Uh, I believe both times they've played against Dallas, they've come away with wins immediately afterwards. So I feel as if that's incredibly great news. Okay, but are we not including the Commissioner's Cup then? I'm not, no. Okay, okay, because I saw that and I was like, wait, I thought it, we were just happy to get within 10 of that one. But I mean, it's still like super close, so. Yeah, that's true. I, I don't think they were counting the Commissioner's Cup either, so uh, we won't either, just out of respect for that. <laughs> Works for me. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so, yeah, let's take a look at some news from across the W. Uh, so the postseason picture is really shaping up. So uh, one team that I really hope makes the playoffs, uh, the Minnesota Lynx. Uh, so they just got Nafisa Collier back. Uh, she gave birth in May. Uh, so one of her wishes was to play with Sylvia Fowles uh, before uh, her last game. And it sounds as if uh, she got her wish. And I saw a tweet saying that uh, Sylvia really didn't want her to push uh, herself. She, she really wanted to make sure Nafisa kind of took her time to get back, to stay with her baby, to kind of, you know, like ease herself back into routine and getting into the swing of things. Uh, but yeah, uh, Fee really seemed as if she really wanted to come back, though. She, she really she worked her butt off in order to come back. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, the wings are now at, f uh, I don't want to, I'm now talking about the wings. Ah, uh, but yeah, I, I really feel as if the Lynx have a really gr great chance of making it, or at least I, uh, they, they are who I would like to see clinch a playoff spot. I know you may, you may feel differently, uh, but I am cheering for them. Uh, I mean, like they do have my most improved player candidate definitely earlier in the season spoke about how I did not want um, Sylvia's last season to end terribly. Like, I want a season that she would want. But I'm just a little nervous. Um, I don't really like when players come back after they've been gone for so long because we saw it with Connecticut last year where everything was going fine. Like, they've adjusted. They adjusted to not having Alyssa Thomas, the face of, you know, the son, a whole franchise player who was putting up amazing numbers this season mm -hmm. but once they already got into a rhythm built chemistry around their core and their MVP John Quill Jones and then Alyssa comes back the plays change you know whoever is like you know first up second up all of that starts to change and they went away from what they were doing the entire season and we dusted them so I don't really want that to happen and I think I said this jokingly a little bit the other day about how Dallas looked, unfortunately, a little bit better without Arike. Uh, I hate that for them. And it was another team that kind of did the same thing, but I just can't think of who it is right now. But we see that when you are prioritizing a player and other players kind of just to get comfortable with passing them the ball and then they're not there, and then we see, oh, this player can do this, oh, this right. player can do that. So I don't know. Um, Do you think that – was that team Phoenix by chance? Were, were you? Was it? I don't <laughs> – I really don't know. I'm, I'm trying to think of uh, teams that have suddenly lost players for one reason or another and seem to play better after they were uh, – I'm, I'm thinking more so uh, that game against Phoenix where uh, Diana Taurasi got uh, the technical and was ejected right afterwards. Right, right. yeah. Uh, so that is the immediate – uh, that that is the immediate example that comes to my mind. I mean, Indiana, I think, has always just been that team. Like, I was really rooting for them. And I don't want to – not too much on um, Kelsey Mitchell because I love Kelsey Mitchell. But that game against – was that Dallas? There was a game that they just played, like, the other day. And it was a really, really, really good game. And it was interesting to see – how they played without essentially their star. And at one point they were holding on really well to the aces when they played them. Yeah, because uh, Dallas looked absolutely just ferocious against us uh, without Arike. Uh, and yeah. 
Uh, yeah, uh, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But I thought uh, Veronica Burton, who started uh, in place of Enrique, looked absolutely great. Uh, so, of course, too, they've also got some other great players to back that up. I know Tiara McCowan was just named Player of the Week. Uh, she's Love got this for Big T. Yeah, absolutely, double doubles in in her past five games, and just even watching her play too, uh, she absolutely was just like controlling the uh, both sides of the floor, uh, just absolutely running circles around the sky. Uh, so I, I'm yeah really happy for her and also to uh, Marina Mabry was also just making shots all over the place as well. So uh, yeah, she's been averaging 19.7 points and five assists in three games. Uh, so I believe she came up really big against the sky too. I want to say like she was uh, getting close to 30 points. Uh, but anyway, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that game uh, in a bit. But anyway, I know uh, you definitely are kind of pushing for the Sparks to make the playoffs. Um, and I, I could ask you like any particular reason why. Like I, I, I know why you would want the, the, the Sparks to make it. But uh, is there any Anything that you've noticed uh, in the couple of games that they've played uh, that would uh, work in their favor heading towards the postseason? Um, obviously, Brittany Sykes. Yes. <laughs> Clearly. She has been unstoppable, like, these last few games. Absolutely love this for her. Um, she dropped, what, 23 against Atlanta, 21 yesterday against a fully loaded Washington, D.C. Miss 16 with Atlanta Deladon. So I don't really think I need to – so proud of them for that. Absolutely <laughs> love that for them. So that was fun. Um, but just, they've been through so much. <laughs> like, in a perfect Disney Channel movie world, they deserve <laughs> to be in the playoffs. I mean, just you completely gut, essentially, your whole team. June, you lose your head coach and your GM. Mm -hmm. Then the next month, you lose a player that you essentially started to build other you know, build around with other moves like Kennedy Carter and a suspension of Amanda Zowie B. So a move that really affected her team. And then she leaves. Shout out to, um, oh no, Olivia Nelson Adota from UConn has been holding her own. And she's like very slim, super tall, great length, and just blocking a bunch of shots. Um, love that for her. So I'm glad that she's finally able to get – um, a look, and I think they should really hold on to her, develop her. So I think she's a key that people probably were sleeping on or didn't expect because they'd been, you know, building their game plans around Liz. But just, I don't know. I just want them to be able to to not leave defeated in a sense because I think it's going to be a scary offseason for them either way. But I at least want them to have some happy memories um, obviously I'm praying on, I got in trouble for this yesterday. I don't know if you saw, I got in trouble for saying I was praying on New York's downfall. Oh no. But I was <laughs> because, because <laughs> they just beat LA twice. And the second one, I felt like they should not have beat them because there was the, one of the worst foul calls I had ever seen against NECA. And that's really the only reason why they lost that game. And so, yeah. Fortunately, I mean, unfortunately for Phoenix, I don't know. Did we want a rematch against Phoenix in real life, or are we happy that they might not make it? Uh, I, I think they more so want a rematch against us than we want one with them. I, I think that that's kind of where that stands right now. Yeah, so I'm, I'm kind of rooting a little bit for Atlanta. I didn't like that loss either, but mm -hmm. I love – I want to feel vindicated a little bit because I remember saying, like, I was really proud of their offseason moves. I think they're building something really special, the culture, the ownership, an ownership group that cares. So I would like to see Atlanta do some things. Although Ryan Howard is breaking all of Britney Sykes' rookie records, and I don't like that. <laughs> but I love what Ryan is accomplishing and our former Sky player, Cheyenne Parker. Yes, yes. And that putback that beat L.A. But, yeah, so I, I think I want – it's what, it's three people left, right? Six – Six can clinch, three spots left. Yep, three spots so left. So I'm going to go with Atlanta. Um, I don't know. I want to – I don't know. I'm conflicted about Dallas, so I'm mm. not sure. So I'm just going to say Atlanta and Minnesota. Okay, yeah. I'm going to go with – this is what I think is going to happen. I'm going to go with Dallas, uh, Minnesota, uh, and I'll go with uh, – hmm. Uh, I'm going to go with L.A., actually. Yes. 
Yeah, I like, that. I, I, I like the chaos. Yes, I, I'm a, yes. We're a big fan of mass entropy here on the uh, CHGO Sky podcast. So I think uh, the more this is mixed up, the absolute better. Uh, so I think our friends over at the uh, the Mercury podcast <laughs> may agree, they may disagree, but we'll be talking to them soon, uh, right after I believe our matchup uh, with the uh, with the Mercury. Uh, so. Otherwise, um, yeah, any other thoughts on playoff action or, or the upcoming playoff action, I should say? I mean, I love this, like, weird time where it's not playoffs, but it might as well be because mm-hmm. of, like, all these teams who are trying to get into the playoffs. It's fun. Um, but honestly, I'm just going to go back and say I want this for Minnesota some more because I want us to be able to love on still a little longer, especially after – the other debacle that got people in my mentions really, really, really upset. Um, so, I don't know. Just give us more time to love on people. Absolutely, absolutely. And I, I have to admit that I picked Minnesota just for that selfish reason where, yeah, I, I would love to see Sill a little bit more. Uh, I feel as if, I mean, you, you, for a player of that caliber, you can never give her too many flowers, in my opinion. Uh, but especially when I scroll through the timeline, I see pictures of Syl with flowers, and it's just like, yeah, that that's exactly what she deserves, uh, and more. Yes. I feel as if she deserves more. And there's another player, I'm not at liberty to say, but there is another player that is rumored to be retiring this season. Um, and so I'm hoping that that team makes the playoffs so that they're able to love them a little bit more. I'm going to be so sad for them when they find out. But, yeah, I'm not ready to come to terms with this. It's a, I feel like we're losing a lot this season. Mm. Like, I kind of feel a little sad about this season. Yeah. I don't like it. Yeah, especially just kind of uh, looking right in the uh, what's in front of us immediately. Uh, and we've definitely skirted this topic quite a bit, and rightfully so, that uh, we may lose a handful of players uh, on the sky. So, yeah, I mean, <laughs> this team, yeah, we might as well just get all the pictures, get all the posters. I hope they come out with some more posters because we will never see this team together ever again. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, so if there was ever a time to run it back, this is absolutely the year to do so. Uh, so uh, speaking of which, uh, so Candace Parker has reached yet another career milestone. Surprise, surprise. Surprise. She has become the fifth WNBA player to reach 600 blocks. Uh, so uh, in her last game, she dropped 18 points and two blocks. So, uh, yeah, just, I mean, uh as a defensive player, like we, we, we cannot say enough great things about CP, uh, but are, are you shocked? Are you at all shocked that she's reached this milestone? No, because she was not defensive player of the year for no reason. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> the players would probably disagree, um, and the coaches, considering she didn't make all defensive team, but mm. I am not shocked at all. Mm, neither am I. Neither am I. Um, so I know it's the giant elephant in the room, but of course, too, if this is indeed Candace Parker's last season, uh, say, uh, in order to put a bow, I guess, on how she's played this year, I mean, there are some games where she hasn't had the best shooting, uh, but still, though, she still contributes in some way. Well, yes, well she's absolutely. either either very good on the boards or even, like, say, when she's been out injured or sick, um, she's somehow having some sort of influence on the team whether it's just be uh, through coaching, through leadership, just to make sure that all of the players on the floor feel supported. Um, I feel that Azure Stevens in particular is like absolutely her shadow and yes. his like, I, I really love their mentor mentee thing that they have going on. Um, and yeah, just to kind of see her interact with even pl- um, like her, her relationship to uh, with Kalia Copper has been really interesting to see. Uh, but anyway, how would you, obs- uh, if this was in fact uh, CP's last season, like how how, how would you assess this final season, quote unquote final season? I mean, so she, I think she started off the season saying like, this could have been it. And then I think as we went on, her answers changed drastically where she kind of hinted like, no, it's not going to be my last season. Or she just completely ignored the question altogether, rightfully mm. so. But I have, but part of me has to wonder if we're able to run it back. And I know that, um, before in the spaces we talked about MVP and there's a lot of conversation of MVP between 
you know, Seattle Storm fans and Brianna Stewart and Asia Wilson and Vegas fans. But it was brought to my attention that typically the MVP has been a person from the team with the best record. Yeah. As of right now, that is us. And if that continues to be that way, I'm not sure who gets picked. I feel like Candace Parker's name is the only one that I've heard, although I think at least before she was out with that unfortunate concussion, mm. I would have put Sloot's name Sloot, into yeah. the hat. But if there's a run it back, a successful back-to-back championship, and Candace Parker gets either finals MVP or regular season MVP, how does she not – ride off into the night on that note even if it's not necessarily what her intended plan was it's like okay that's that's perfect a true disney channel yeah perfect (laughs) ending how do you how do you come back from that i don't know so i think if that's the case i think it's a success like i i cannot complain we've had our ups and downs but i think this is probably the most happy sky fans have been since the championship so I think it's even if it was to end right now, I think this was a win, and I'm proud of us. So I'm happy. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Uh, this definitely has been a fairy tale season for Candace Parker. Uh, she comes home, uh, she wins not one chip but two. Uh, just I know I'm, I'm thinking ahead of myself here. Uh, absolutely, just you know she can ride off into the sunset. Uh, but that's the thing I've noticed actually. Like if you kind of look at a lot of uh, P- uh, folks on WNBA Twitter, they're picking like they're all first teams, right? And so I've seen a lot of mentions, like rightfully so, of NECA, Asia, uh, who else? Um, uh, Sabrina Ionescu. Um, see. Uh, Brianna Stewart and a lot of them I don't think this is on purpose but not of them not a lot of them are really including Sky players I don't think it's necessarily because there's not a standout MVP I just feel as if everyone has contributed pretty significantly and almost to the point of selflessness and so I think that is part of it because like you said um, if I were to pick someone who wasn't Candace Parker it would probably be Sloot uh, just because Sloot is out there uh, just completely setting the floor up and all, just like all of the nonverbal communication and control she has over the floor too is mm. it's one of the more unseen things that a lot of people probably don't pay that much attention to and of course, too, I mean, you can't ignore uh, the contributions of Emma Mieseman and how, oh. like, yeah, she's been just shooting very well. Uh, and uh, also, too, um, Rebecca Gardner, Azure Stevens, like those two off the bench have been absolutely wonderful, mm-hmm. too. So I don't know. I, I feel as if um, I don't want to say that all of these players have been so evenly matched where, you know, we, we really don't have a superstar. And I, I also uh, forgot to mention Kalia Copper, um, who has been like absolutely dynamic and handful of games she's been in but uh yeah I feel as if there's not really a standout star uh, mainly because everyone just seems to be playing really well yes and that's why before I've kept saying if we're gonna get an MVP it should be the whole team and that is exactly why James Wade is executive of the year because this is a perfect team it's someone can show up And someone cannot show up. And it's okay because someone else is going to be able to show up for them. And when we talk about, let's say, Asia Wilson, it's we know she does not have a bench. Like, even Mm -hmm. when you're talking about the Aces, it is absolutely the Asia and Kelsey and Chelsea and, uh, you know, I mean, they're they're starting five. It's essentially, and like Jackie Young was in the conversation as well. So it's not like she's doing it alone, but there's – a, she's a clear standout when you're looking at both ends of the floor when it comes Definitely. to that Vegas team. Mm-hmm. So you absolutely want to have her in the conversation. Now, there's been some conversation on WNBA Twitter um, about the push for Brianna Stewart and some, like the Storm Chasers Twitter page or something said something along the lines of Brianna doesn't have help. And it's like, okay, well, you have like five UConn people and four of y'all got y'all <laughs> Olympic rings like yesterday yeah. so which one is it you have four olympians like five uconn players but she's doing it alone <laughs> that that doesn't really make sense to me um but i mean brianna stewart is just brianna stewart i think everyone agrees she's a generational talent definitely and even though i don't think you have to go to her i think she is the person that you go to and so maybe that's why she has um you know like more more minutes, more points than everybody else. Right. But I think they have a good group. I mean, the other day, um, I think it was Gabby Williams, like, had some, like, break. Well, she did some, Old like, friend, Gabby around Williams. The, yeah. the back pass. Like, it was some amazing pass. 
Definitely. You also can't discount uh, uh, Ezzy Magbagor, uh, Jewel Lloyd. Uh, you, 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 like, yeah, of course she, I mean, to, to say that she doesn't have help is, I don't know, a bit egregious in my yes. opinion. And, mm-hmm. and I don't know if it's just Alyssa Thomas hate. And honestly, I do feel like she gets a lot of hate, which is very weird to me um, mm-hmm. because I don't really understand it. But. I would even I don't I haven't heard anything about her being in a conversation for MVP and that's insane. I don't know if it's the announcer's fault because they keep talking about, you know, her shoulders and the surgery and all of this and people are like, Oh, I'm tired of hearing about it. But I would I would like her name mentioned a lot more. Absolutely. We'll be talking about Alyssa Thomas in a little bit. But first of all, I want to give a shout out to Aaliyah from the Phoenix fam. Hey, Aaliyah, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Uh, We're definitely going to have to have you on the show to uh, discuss the the Mercury season, too, because I know uh, from both ends of the spectrum, uh, I know that that they've had a very interesting season uh, and on the yeah. on the other side of the spectrum, so have we. Uh, so it's always good to talk to our our beloved siblings out in Phoenix. So yes, shout out to Aaliyah. Thank you for watching. Thank Blessings you for listening. To you all, I'm yeah. so sorry. <laughs> so sorry about the news. <laughs> also, big shout out to Corbin, Mallory, Aya. Like, thank you so much for uh, interacting with us and uh, writing with us this season. So uh, speaking of riding with us, like you definitely like riding with us, right? Uh, so support CHGO and download the PointsBet app. Use code CHGO when you sign up. If you do that right now, you get two risk-free bets up to $2,000, but that's not it. You make a $50 or more first-time deposit, you'll receive a free CHGO membership, and we've got a crap ton of web content, and you'll even get a free shirt of your choice from the CHGO locker. There's a super dope Sky shirt, by the way, that's $2,000 in free bets, a free CHGO membership, and a free t- t-shirt all for making a $50 first time deposit at points bet you have any questions email us points bet at allchjo.com we'll be happy to help you out so see an edge in the game you're watching is your favorite team prime for a comeback don't watch the game bet along with it live so more live betting more live markets and faster live cash outs follow along with your bets the moment they hit and stay in the live action all game long so that promo code once again is chgo when you download the points bet app so what are you waiting for besides from besides for me to stop talking it is your time to elevate your live betting game so once the game starts don't just bet live your bet life with points bet i think this is a points bet hat i'm pointing at it right now Uh, So if you or someone you know have a gambling problem and wants help, call 1-800-GAMBLER for crisis counseling and referral services. All right, let's talk about this week in Sky Basketball. So the most recent win, uh, 94-91 over the Connecticut Sun. So this was a matchup between two former WNBA MVPs, so Candace Parker and Jonquil Jones. Uh, So with this win, the Sky completed a season sweep over the, the Connecticut Sun. So now, Sabria, I I remember earlier this year, you mentioned that uh, the sun weren't really anything to worry about. So I'm going to go ahead and give you your flowers here. There you go. Get a round of applause for that. Woo! Listen, I haven't been wrong yet since the draft predictions. I have not been wrong yet. No, you haven't. No, you haven't. Uh, Sabria Tradamus. It's <laughs> not Nostra Sabria. Um, but anyway, we were talking a little bit about Alyssa Thomas. Uh, she's absolutely just contributed a massive amount to this team. Uh, so she made this layup with 437 left in the third quarter. Uh, so the Sun, uh, th- this was also one of those games where the sky almost let it slip. So surprise. Uh, <laughs> so they were trailing as many as 17 points in the first half. Uh, so in the third quarter, they had a lead at 58-56. So over. Um, so Alyssa Thomas definitely uh, putting in work there. Uh, so uh, I have noticed that, especially in a lot of these later games, uh, there are going to be a lot of these slip ups, and uh, there's been a, like a lot of talk about load management and keeping legs fresh and everything. And so um, every post game conference. Uh, Coach Wade is always like, yeah, that was on me. Like, I should have, you know, just minded my rotations more, right? Um, So when it comes to a lot of these leads slipping, what are some things that you've noticed that uh, have been, I guess, a little more permissive on the Sky side? I don't know. It's like, at this point, 
is it a it's a choice <laughs> like yeah. i feel like we've we say this every week like i don't i don't know what else we can say like at some point yes you're bad but adjust like just adjust like i think one thing that vicky johnson talked about um in the last dallas game with indiana was that she's just now in the season learning when to call a timeout for her team and i think maybe he should start looking into that like not just the rotations but the timeouts to have conversations say hey look we're doing this thing now where we're not communicating properly we're doing this thing now where we're settling for the good shot and not making the extra pass or pulling up when we need to for the great shot Mm -hmm. and i think just settling them when they get like a little too excited or or even a little too comfortable just figuring out what to say to get them to stop doing that yeah I think let's try that yeah yeah and no I, I think you're definitely onto something there where a lot of the times um some shots uh, seem a little rushed where a lot of the times they will give priority to the good shot uh, and kind of push the great shot off to the side and so as a result it ends up in a lot of just sloppy shots, terrible looks, and uh, missed baskets, uh, which uh, we don't like. We don't like when we miss baskets. That's bad because that ends up, that, that, that results in games being lost. Um, so, yeah, uh, one thing that definitely saved this game, a four, fourth quarter salute reemerged. Uh, so this guy went on a 28 run uh, pretty much from 719 to nearly the end of the game in the fourth quarter. Um, so Slute had nine points in the fourth quarter. So uh, w- one thing that I always keep on banking on, all right, if this guy, you know, enter the fourth quarter with some sort of deficit, f- fourth quarter Slute is going to yeah. come in. Like yeah. she, a switch is going to flip, yeah. and she's automatically just going to, you know, turn into like a human dragon or something and just absolutely control the court from there. So um, it was really refreshing to also see that uh, – kick in uh, after she returned from her injury I think Uh, I I already knew she was going to be all right but I know there was maybe a split second where I would thought was like "Mm, I don't know if she's ready yet Uh, but of course you know coach insisted that she was Uh, but uh, I I know like we always also talk a lot about you know uh, bringing players back and throwing players back into the mix and like you were absolutely right in the sense that uh yeah even if players miss a few games uh when they return it takes a little bit to get that mojo back and kind of you know reestablish that chemistry with teammates so uh like one pl- a teammate that I think Slute plays with very well, of course, is Candace Parker. When they find each other, like it's, it just feels like magic, and it feels like they've been playing together for years. Mm-hmm. But of course, like even that can be disrupted. Um, so it matters. It matters. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, and I just don't want us to get comfortable with that though either, because I think once we've noticed the pattern it's easy for another team to notice it. So I don't want us to get comfortable with that. Like, it's definitely great and comforting to say, oh, we got sloop. But, like, let's not put ourselves in that position. Like, why did we how and why did we lose the lead? Like, I really, I would like to know. Yeah. Um, And I think that's also something that someone like Becky Hammond plays great attention to. Uh, I just remember that during the postgame conference and – after the Commissioner's Cup, she was just absolutely taking apart uh, this team as if it were a Lego set. They're mm-hmm. like, hey, like this is everything that you need to do in order to beat the sky. Uh, did we do that tonight? Uh, yes. Uh, we're going to have to do it again, uh, for sure. But, uh, yeah, she was absolutely just uh, coming at us with a laundry list of all the things that had to be done. And, of course, her big conclusion was that it's a lot. You have to do a lot to beat this mm-hmm. team. Uh, so... There you go. There you have it. Um, I don't know. Like the, the way she kind of listed it, it was very academic. Like it was almost like watching a professor, you know, like, mm. like give a lecture on a very, uh, very complicated subject. So uh, the fact that she thinks that we're the or this guy is very complicated, it, it gives me a lot of confidence in my opinion. Yeah, but <laughs> it also lets us know that she knows that she knows, <laughs> and so I think we need to figure out what she knows, how she knows and change what she thinks she knows in order to have a chance in a series against Vegas. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah, she's definitely one of just the the brightest basketball minds out there. Uh, so to absolutely uh, kind of change what she knows is going to be a task going mm-hmm. forward. Um, all right, let's talk about the 93-83 win over the Mystics. Uh, so a really great bright spot in this game. They only had seven turnovers. Uh, so I'm, I'm sure Coach Wade was happy about that. So I think the best part of this game was that uh, they completely dominated the first half. They took a 55-34 lead into the intermission. And another common theme was definitely making sure that team does not throw, the opposing team does not throw that first punch in the mm-hmm. first quarter. Mm-hmm. Uh, because you've said before that uh, if you fall behind early, it's hard to come back late. Yes. Um, and this was what I thought the Azure Stevens game. Uh, career high five yes. blocks. Yes. And uh, this was, she's also the first player in WNBA history with 10 plus points, five plus rebounds, five plus blocks, uh, two plus assists, and two plus steals off the bench. I believe the last player to do this was, guess who? Sylvia Fowles. Uh, so I thought this tweet was pretty funny. I don't know if you can see the tweet about us. Uh, so uh, A is the name asked Azare, what did you do to before this game? You're, you're going off with all these blocks. She watched a horror movie. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what movie she saw. Like, like, what do you think she saw? I don't know. I really don't. <laughs> the one that comes to mind is one of those that I can't even say because it's one of those that you can't like if you call them and I'm not calling him, but Oh, yeah, I, I know what you mean. Yeah. I, I, I totally know the, the name of the movie. Yes. <laughs> Let's see. Um, yeah, the first horror movie that comes to mind that would absolutely get me hyped up for a game. I think Hereditary. That game or that that movie was creepy. Never heard of it. <laughs> Now I'm invested. I have to go look into it. Yeah. Uh, if you like uh, if you like weird stuff, uh, yeah, Hereditary is going to be your jam right there. Um, weird, gory stuff is about oh. as, uh, as, as much as I can describe it without spoiling too much. <laughs> but uh, anyway, in this game, um, Rebecca Gardner and Azare Stevens uh, each had 11 points. And so on the defensive end, uh, it's good to point out that uh, Beck leads the team in steals, while Z leads the team in blocks. Uh, So there we go. Yes, some very cute, cute uh, stats to present there. All right, so let's talk about that 84-78 loss to the Dallas Wings uh, last Tuesday. So like we said, uh, they didn't have Arike. Uh, Veronica Burton starting in her place looked pretty good. Uh, essentially, they just had, like, a- as everyone knows, they're very physical. They, they got ahead. Yes. Um, and, of course, too, this guy had 16 turnovers. And it's uh, going to be hard to win when you have 16 turnovers in a game. Yes. Um, their three-point shooting also wasn't, that, wasn't very great either. Uh, and, of course, too, uh, we had another game with some questionable calls, uh, some no calls. Uh, So Azare Stevens said this, the refs didn't call much. We don't know what we're getting from them. We responded in the fourth. We were physical back. We just got to do that for 40 minutes. Um, So, so yeah, uh, what you said before about how uh, this team essentially just needs to uh, be absolutely physical back uh, and just uh, not get tired, I suppose. I know easy, easier said than done. Yes, but I think that also comes from, like, the low management we talked about and yeah. figuring out when to put in players to get them rest early before it's too late. But I've been talking about these refs all season. I don't know what else to say. Like I said, the controversy with the L.A. New York game, um, two questionable calls in that game for me. Um, I don't know if you watched that game, but – Mm-hmm. Brittany got a tech for a celebration. And what? she's like, she's first of all, she's not even really a fouler, like to begin with, but she got um, a tech for celebrating. Something that she does literally in every game, something that Sabrina Ionescu later did in the fourth quarter. And she does all the time as well. I found out today that that tech has been rescinded, like uh, the tech that got called on Skylar Diggins. But I was like, well, Brittany, how do you know you got rescinded? She was like, well, they told me. I was like, well, nobody told me. Like, like, no one knows. Like, so it's just this weird thing with refs, I think, this season. Then yesterday, I don't know if you saw, I know Natasha Cloud has a fine hitting her account from Catherine today because mm-hmm. she went completely in. Like, 
like walked off the court with like um, Brianna Turner quickness with like the refs, like like just at the refs. I don't even know what she said, but she was like, "Go ahead and find me." But like the refs suck basically, and she I just saw that she's uh, chosen to kind of elaborate today. But everyone just is fed up with the refs. And I just don't understand. Like, did that James Wade take ever get rescinded? I don't think so. I, like in the <laughs> in the very beginning of the uh, the season, I know that James Wade got a tech for doing a hand motion. <laughs> like, I, I think that was opening uh, the opening game too, and uh, he seemed as confused about it as we all were. And so he he just flat out was like, "Hey, look, I'm about as confused as you are on this." Um, so yeah, I also like didn't know that text could be rescinded. Like, yes. So like, like, what is the point of rescinding a tech though? Like, I mean, well, so obviously you can't go back and change what happens right. in the game. Like, yeah, you can't yeah, yeah. take away the point. No, you can't. Like, no. If you but, get too many though, you will get suspended. Right, and you, so uh, so we know Diana Taurasi has had that happen. There was mm. also a lot of people who expressed concern about Skyler. Because I think Skyler was getting to that point, too, where there's, like, a suspension for tax. But also, they have to pay for those. So, from a player's mind, like, you absolutely don't want to pay whatever the fine is it's probably, for no reason. Yeah. But I think we need more transparency for when that happens. Because I don't even think there was an appeal process. I think maybe – I don't know who it is. Because I think the head ref was there – and might have called the tech. So I'm not really sure what the process is afterwards to say, actually, I don't think she should have gotten a tech. Let's rescind that. But we'll never know because we don't even know apparently when that happens. I don't know who happens. I mean, like, who knows when it happens? But someone was like, oh, yeah, and Skylar's tech the other day was rescinded. And I was like, oh, well, congratulations for her. <laughs> I did just look it up. It's once you get your seventh technical is when you get a suspension, Ooh, a one game suspension. A one game suspension. Uh, yeah, I think Skylar was at like six. Mm. And then it rescinded, so I don't know where she's at now, but. <sighs> huh, okay. That's very interesting, just mainly because we've seen plenty of plays that probably would have warranted a technical, but nothing was called. So uh, I believe uh, Azure Stevens took a blow to the face um, in, on Sunday's game. Um, I, I I actually don't know. I, I can't remember who smacked her. Um, and I, it was probably accidental, but of course, too. I mean... Um, like I, I would automatically assume that some sort of physical contact that would result in someone being injured that could possibly result in a technical. So I know that there's been a lot of discussion about flagrant one and flagrant two and that even whether it's like on the ball, off the ball, basketball movement, if it's anywhere above the neck, it's like an automatic flagrant mm -hmm. two. But I do remember there being some instance where something was an automatic technical, but I'm not really sure what that is like again like yeah just just mainly because the rules i mean I'm, I'm sure that they are like absolutely just translated different ways or interpreted as different ways uh, and and subjective sometimes uh but the fact that there's not really a lot of transparency or at least like an official announcement that oh hey such and such Correct. was yeah Correct. that's Correct. that's i yes. don't know and like i said i hate comparing it to the nba but I will credit them on the fact that their referees have some Twitter page where they do release official statements yeah. when they admit that something is wrong or they've rescinded something. So maybe they should look into that because it's it's confusing. It is. It is. Just even just, you know, a simple, hey, we effed up. Um, this is this is how we effed up. Yeah, I think that would go a long way. And especially if players are like, look, we're confused. What's the tone? Like, what can I get away with? Like, I'm I'm getting calls this day, but then you're not calling it when the other team is doing it the next day. So I don't know. But it's interesting to see how this is going to um, affect the playoffs. Because like I said, a lot of stuff, a lot of injuries just come from no calls and not really setting a tone early on. So hopefully they get it together. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, especially on Tuesday, uh, th there was some very obvious frustration uh, from both sides of the bench, uh, actually, um, or both sides of the court. Uh, Dallas was getting uh, very uh, frustrated with a lot of uh, no calls, uh, so were the sky. Um, so Coach Wade and, of course, like Azure Stevens, like very, very gently addressed that, that, you know, like there weren't really a lot of calls. Um, but, uh, yeah, like just as she said, we don't know what we're getting from them. 
uh, which I don't know. I, I, I think it needs to be better. I, I, I I mean, if I was a player, I would kind of want to know the tone and kind of mm-hmm. just be like, all right, so here are my boundaries. I'm going to try not to cross them. Mm-hmm. But if I do, if I have to cross those boundaries, I'm going to know the repercussions. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. It just, I don't know. It, it's a little odd to me that it, it's uh, not as uh, ironclad or clear as it should be. Same. <laughs> All right. So, of course, too, if you like what you're hearing, and I hope you do, uh, definitely subscribe to CHGO. We got podcasts and live shows and every team every day, post game shows, premium written content from members at allchgo.com, dope merch for all teams, a free shirt when you become a member, and um, access to a members only discount called the CHGO Lounge. So, super dope, super cool. Come kick it with us. Uh, that website again is allchgo.com. And of course, too, uh, definitely follow along with us on Twitter. Our Twitter, ha- twi- Twitter hander- handle <laughs> is chgo underscore sky. Or you can also follow chgo underscore sports. Uh, they are the uh, fine purveyors of this great content that you're listening to and or watching right now. All right, so... Uh, Avir, A-V-I-R, has, pr- has uh, brought up, Slute is now yes. walking around with a black eye. Refs, refs, yeah. I do remember that photo of Slute with the black eye just kind of strutting around, kind of like, yeah, whatever, man. Uh, I don't know. That sh- honestly should not have to be the case. Yes. Uh, but anyway, uh, let's move on to our final segment of the show called Court of Law. So Court of Law is basically we bring up, oh, there we go, that's the hammer. Clang, clang, clang. Uh, So in court of law, we bring up certain topics or issues from around the WNBA. And Judge Whitaker is going to rule on whether said parties are going to be held in (laughs) contempt. All right. So typically a frequent antagonist of this show is the uh, the WNBA org itself, uh, just mainly (laughs) due to the treatment of its players. But of course, too, you know, in my opinion, if you truly love something, you got to criticize it. You criticize it because you want it to be better. Precisely. Constructive. Precisely. It's good. It's constructive criticism with a dash of love sometimes you know a full you know punch to the face and with but it's all in love it's all in love all right so uh, if you haven't seen it uh, Neko Gumake posted a video where she said that in her 11 plus years of playing professionally uh, she has never slept in an airport before Uh, so uh, what happened was the Sparks flight had uh, had to be canceled. Uh, there weren't enough hotel rooms. So apparently the team had to divvy up who was going to sleep at the airport or who was going to go back to the hotel. So, of course, this tweet from old friend Lexi Brown says uh, they had a rock, paper, scissors tournament. Uh, to determine who, in fact, got to go to the hotel. So, Sabria and I were chatting uh, before the show, saying, like, uh, we think Lexi is joking. <laughs> but we're not exactly sure that this, for all we know, could be the truth. Um, so, uh, anyway, uh, this is a professional sports league. Uh, to have players sleep in an airport, the fact that this is happening on Kathy's watch, uh, this is absolutely unacceptable. Um, and of course, too, uh, we had a tweet from a friend of the podcast, Brittany Sykes, at 8.06 a.m., where she's like, let's try again. Mm-hmm. Uh, bless you, Brittany. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. Oh, my goodness. Anyway, uh, what is your take on this terrible, terrible situation? Okay, so a few thoughts. So I do know that yesterday's flight from D.C. was supposed to leave at like 10-something Eastern time, and they were supposed to get back to L.A., it's like a five-hour trip with the hours. It was like maybe close to 1 o'clock in the morning. And then I remember texting her at like past 10 o'clock their time, and she's like, um, yeah, I'm on the way to the airport. And I'm like, wait, why are you just not on the way to the airport? She's like, the flight got delayed. So I'm like, let me look it up. So I look it up, and it was like, yes, it got delayed from like 10-something to like midnight. Mm-hmm. But it, I think that was like the second delay. So she's like, well, can you help me, like, figure out the options? Because, like, at this point, she's not even confident that there will be a flight. Because I'm, like, I'm, like, trying to talk to her, and I'm trying to figure out, like, what is the delay? 
it apparently was the flight the um the pilots tapping out like they can only fly so many hours mm. in a day so they went past the hours so i was talking to alia and she was like confused like she'd never heard that before and i was like well yeah like they can't go past a certain number of hours because obviously like they might get tired like i get it it would be like a liability thing like you shouldn't be flying this much and even if say i don't know what the hours is but let's say you can only fly like eight hours right i don't that's not the case but or whatever number say maybe 10 the flight being five hours a pilot could have maybe six but if they do the five hours they're going to be past their limit an hour away from la and they just can't fly the plane so that's what that was, and they just didn't have any more. There was, like, really nothing they could do. So the flight ends up getting canceled. She has family there. So I just, after talking with her, she's like, yeah, okay, they finally rebooked us on a flight. First one out, 9 a.m., which is why she tweeted that at 8 something, which is 9 a.m. their time. Mm-hmm. So I'm talking to her. She's like, yeah, I'm going back to my aunt's house. Like, I knew, like, she has family, so that's where she was going. It didn't even register to me about everyone else. Until I got on Twitter and I started seeing the tweets. And I know Lexi had a really funny one. I think it was like a SpongeBob meme maybe where she was like, (laughs) I saw that. when Kathy, like when Kathy (laughs) wake up in the morning. And I was just like, I know just, I'm like, do you call Kathy? Does someone have Kathy's number? Is she expected to be reached at this hour? Or like some people were bringing up, is it an ownership thing? Like obviously, they're not allowed to charter flights. We know that because New York got in trouble. Um, but how do you not have enough hotel? Like, that's insane to me. I'm someone they worked in a hotel for two years. Like, I do mm-hmm. understand that hotels do absolutely get booked and sold out. But in the D.C. area, like, was it just, I forget what airport they were in. Because I know, like, the Mystics moved their arena. So it's not, like bmi or reagan or something anymore it was like some other one so i'm not sure if that was a thing but like how many hotels were there mm. was it not like i mean neck and shanae were at the airport so like do you give them a room and say okay it's got two beds y'all can sleep in one bed since you all are sisters someone else gets that one it has a pull out couch like because from based off tweets it like i don't know if jordan canada was joking but it seems like she got a room because someone made a joke about they had a talent show. Oh, yeah. And she sung. And she for, was singing. And she, she was yeah. singing, and that's how she got her room. But Kennedy Carter um, tweeted something about making the decision to stay in the airport um, and let someone else have a room. Obviously, NECA and Shanae stayed. I think Coach Tramiel stayed. Um and it seemed like from Lexi's tweets, she was also in the airport, so I'm not really sure. So I know people were fi- trying to look earlier. Don't don't look at Brittany. Brittany was not in either one, so she did not have a hotel room either. So I don't know who was in the hotel, how they figured that out. Definitely interesting to figure out. If if they're ever able to speak on it, I would want to know. Because yeah. I'm like, Jordan, can you tell me the truth? Like I don't I don't know if you're joking about singing. I don't know if Lexi's joking either, but like I would want to know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It, it seems as if, you know, some details are missing here. Because, uh, I mean, you would assume that, you know, someone would advocate and just be like, hey, like these these players need rooms. But, okay, so I also do know that from the CBA, there is a certain quality of room that is mandated for them. Uh, so I believe it might be like a four star. Mm. So they can't stay in anything under a four star. And as time goes on, if they have an incident with the hotel, they put that in there as like this hotel did not meet our quality, our, our standards, so we cannot stay here and they're not allowed to be booked at that hotel. Mm. So I'm not sure if this was like a area where it's like maybe one four star hotel or something. If maybe there was a holiday in down the street, I just really don't know. But there's like a lot of factors into it. Um, I'm not sure who's booking that. If a player decided like, oh, I'm going to just book my own. Do they have to come out of pocket for that? It's a lot. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, there's, I know, like, I'm I'm sure that, say, if a player says, you know what, I'm just going to go get my own accommodations, like, say, I'm sure there's, like, some sort of thing where, you know, they, it, it has to meet a certain, like, level of, you know, like, qualifications, and also, too, like, do they get that expensed, or yeah. do they have to, like, pay for it a certain way, and I mean, it's, like, if I were a player, that would be the last thing I'm thinking of. Yeah, I would have yeah. just been at a hotel, I'm not even going to, yeah. like, I, like, the same way Brittany called me, like, I would have hoped, 
I don't know if it crossed their minds to just call somebody on their team to figure it out. Mm-hmm. In a perfect world, I would have liked Magic Johnson or Lisa Leslie to get on the phone and figure it out for them. Yeah, yeah. But it's not a perfect. I mean, even if they have to get split up, I mean, they've been split up on flights before. Mm-hmm. But fortunately, this is their last road trip. Based on the standings, it doesn't look like they're going to have this problem anymore, unfortunately. But this is one of those things where you have to talk about seriously of them being from D.C. to L.A. That's a long of fact, flight. Somebody, who do they play? Now? Connecticut. Dijanae posted on her Instagram that she was in L.A. And Aaliyah sent it to me and was like, not Connecticut got to L.A. before L.A. And they did because they were just here. But they were able to get there before they got there from D.C. Oh, my goodness. But this is one of those things that you have to talk about when we're discussing reasonable expansion and why as much as I would love to move to Canada I do not think that is in the near future for this league oh yeah because of course too if you have a hypothetical team in Toronto of course you have to think of oh passports and you know just procedure crossing the border and just all of these other travel Mm -hmm. issues that come to light Um, but yeah you're absolutely right that a lot of these travel woes Uh, It's been going on all season, too. Uh, They really need to figure it out. Yeah, so I'm – I think there's only so much Kathy can do. I think maybe we are also unclear on what she's supposed to do versus what she can do, what she's expected to do. So I'm going to blame um, the airline and Sparks ownership for not at least making sure they had somewhere to sleep that wasn't – a bench because god forbid we start getting protocol reports because they were sleeping in an airport so i am going to hold the airline and sparks unfortunately ownership and contempt that's my right right judge whitaker has ruled Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's pretty much our show for the day. Uh, so the season is winding down. Uh, so the Sky uh, will be play at home tomorrow for the last regular season game of the year. Uh, that is tomorrow against the Storm. So tip-off is 7 p.m. Central. And, uh, yeah, if you want to roll through, definitely please do so. Uh, you can get tickets from uh, Grow the Game W. Dot com, mm-hmm. And a portion of that goes to Sabria's wonderful organization, Grow the Game. So, uh, yeah, uh, I'll be there. Hopefully you will as well. Sabria, you you coming through tomorrow? Um, yes, I am coming through tomorrow. I've also uh, been told that playoff tickets have already gone on sale. So. What? Yes, apparently so. So. I mean, we know we're safe. We know we're going to have at least a couple of those. So, um, so yeah. we got that to look Check forward to. Too. Yep. Wait, we got a question from Cache Taylor. I hope I said your name right. So uh, we do the podcast every Monday at 530. Uh, but yeah, uh, we're all Sky here. Uh, we'll talk about the Bulls sometimes. And by sometimes, I, I mean like never. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> Unless it's um, the Morgan Park graduate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we, we definitely support Chicago players on here. Um, but yes, I feel like we should all support Chicago teams. Uh, maybe, I don't know, the Cubs are sus, but yes, you know. not them. Everybody <laughs> else, though. Everyone else, though. Yes. All right. All right. Sorry, Cody. I don't think he's listening. <laughs> all right. Anyway, that does it for today's show. Uh, otherwise, uh, I'm Janice Scurrio. I'm Sabria Whitaker. As always, Sky and Four.